Isabel, let's talk about uh, this mass release of uh, prisoners. 1,700 so far over the last couple of days, and uh, we know that uh, at least 4,000, 5,000 more uh, will be re released over the uh, weeks and uh, days and weeks to come. Uh, but I'm just going to give you a snapshot of the chaos of this. It, 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 again, another story that beggars belief. So one guy... Uh, he's a 28-year-old guy, he's not named. Uh, he was uh, fortunate enough to be among those serious prisoners. Can't, can't believe his luck. Lucky break, he's chosen for this early release scheme, way before he's finished his sentence. So out he uh, came through the gates into the sunshine of yesterday morning, waiting outside the jail <laughs> was a police car full of coppers, and they promptly arrested him uh, on a suspicion of rape, uh, sex assault and a racially aggravated public order offence. So he walked out of the jail and the police said, you're under arrest. They put handcuffs on, handcuffs on him and took him to the local Nick. I mean... I mean, uh, what, I, bit, what bit of the system doesn't talk to the other bit of the system? I can't imagine this happening in any other advanced economy of the world where, yeah. you know, the computer that you put someone's name into saying maybe, uh, you know, we'll consider this guy for early release doesn't come up with a bit of a sort of alarm noise, yeah. you know, a few flashing lights saying actually this guy's wanted for <laughs> a serious allegation of another kind. Yeah. I mean... It, honestly, each and every day, I can't believe what we're talking about here. It genuinely, genuinely beggars belief. And can we please talk about, too, because it's a related subject. You know the, the um, zombie knife thing, um, yeah. where this compensation scheme that we've talked about before, the £10 if you hand in your zombie knife. Have you heard the one about the wholesaler that has handed in 35,000 zombie knives? And the police have clearly said that the only use for these zombie knives is to kill and maim people. That's the only reason that people have these zombie knives. So instead of actually arresting and prosecuting that wholesaler, because what good are they doing peddling these instruments of doom, they are actually going to be compensated 35,000 times 10 pounds. That's 350 grand to the purveyors of death. Uh, I mean... <laughs> I know. It's just, it, again, again, this is just madness. I mean, you know, going back to that prisoner I just told you about, you can imagine it, the cops saying, yeah, we've got to arrest this guy. He's, uh, he's wanted for sex assault, rape and aggravated racial assault. Any idea where he might be? Yeah, I've had a tip-off. He's going to be coming out of when Wandsworth Prison tomorrow morning. I mean, come on, don't let him out in the first place. Madness, madness. But uh, here's the other mad element of this story today that emerged this morning, the lunatic Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, a uh, clean air specialist. Uh, did you see, by the way, that his big ULEZ scheme hasn't improved air quality one bit, not one iota. It's done nothing to improve pollution, so that's wonderful. No, sure anyway. Yeah. Coffers, though, hasn't it? Of course, yes. Are you saying it was just about money? How dare you? Uh, but uh, seriously, he uh, says that uh, these prisoners being let out must be prioritised over people waiting for housing. So law-abiding, decent citizens who are on the list waiting to get to housing, you know, council housing, social housing. A lot of people need that, you know, uh, and a lot of people deserve it. Sadiq Khan says we must make prisoners jump the queue so they get social housing first because otherwise they might reoffend. So what that adds up to, Isabel, is this. If you want to get a roof over your head, don't be a decent citizen. Don't go out and work hard and obey the law. Go and break the law so badly you get sent to jail. Then they'll release you early and they'll give you a house. It's just barking mad, isn't it? It is completely barking mad. And I think that you... Um, whilst I know you're kind of being slightly sarcastic, you actually make a really important point there because there comes a, there comes a juncture where people, ordinary, good, law-abiding people who are working really hard and increasingly struggling to pay all these crippling bills and to try to maintain a nice quality of life, 
begin to wonder whether there's any point in them carrying on being good law-abiding citizens and working really hard. If the system is tilted so far against the good people, the law-abiding people, the hard workers, then what happens is that those on the edges of that, those who really just can't do it anymore, decide to pack it in and go on benefits and works. And, yeah. and then that's when you get a kind of gradual downward spiral. And, and I fear that we're already seeing that in so many respects. You know, we see it with a number of people on benefits because it's become an easier choice. And increasingly, I, I, I worry that we're going to see it in terms of petty criminality and worse because the consequences just aren't there for that behavior and if people think that they can make an easy buck by behaving in a certain way uh, well frankly if the system doesn't penalize them for that then that's what's going to happen isn't it yeah, it really is i mean that it's sadiq khan that is very worse but the trouble is i mean the one thing i like about uh, Keir starmer and it's probably the only thing i like about him is that he, he hates sadiq khan so uh, he's got that going for him so at, le at least we can hope that uh, labor won't listen to sadiq khan's mad plan to let prisoners jump the queue for housing uh, but uh, <laughs> actual costs anyway i mean if we are letting people out of prison early but then the taxpayer has to pay for them to be in hotels i mean this doesn't add up in a in a kind of cost benefit way at all a prison place about i think it costs about 40 pounds a day i think mm. i might be uh, that might actually be more than that but one way or another you're not going to get a hotel accommodation and all the rest of it for much less so <laughs> I just don't know what we're doing here. It's complete and utter insanity. Uh, I just think we could better move on. But uh, my last point would be, uh, if you remember the COVID panic, the COVID era, uh, they knocked out uh, Nightingale hospitals. I think it took them about nine weeks to build new hospitals, brand new hospitals. Yeah. Uh, why don't we build some Nightingale prisons? Uh, in yeah, nine well, weeks. <laughs> we talked about this before. You wouldn't yeah. even need to build them from scratch. There's yeah. plenty of derelict kind of MOD buildings. There's all sorts of premises that can be used. Just quickly correcting myself, I think the cost of a prison place is about 40,000 a year. I was going to say, it's uh, not 40 quid a day. That's it's a bit no, more. No, no, that would be nice. 40,000 a year. Yeah. But I mean, the cost of keeping people in hotels is many, many thousands as well. Yeah. So this, this government is becoming like a hotel service, you know, concierge service, oh. migrants, prisoners. Prisoners, we'll find you four-star hotels. Leave it to us. It's just—it's becoming a comedy show. It really is.